ja, be so kind and give us an update on elastography basics and clinical results. And it will be very interesting. Uh, what is your information about this? Thanks a lot. It's mute. Who, who was a long time uh, treasurer of Ebus, and he was one of the founding members. So please give him a, an applause. He's here and he's one of our heroes. Okay. So, and then we, he, he could hear it. <laughs> and then we go on. And what we uh, said about the cancers, it's difficult. Sometimes they look very harmless, and that's true for all uh, methodology. So. I don't trust any methodology, but it's important at that stage to understand that sometimes these rounded lesions are G3s and they are elastic, but they are hypervascular and we can uh, use this uh, advanced technology to differentiate it. And um, it is part now of the Byron's lexicon. What about the basics? What is elasticity? It's defined as the ability of a material to deform under given shearing force and return to its original shape due to the elastic recoiling. And if you want to measure it, um, the question is just the ratio. How much a material deforms under applied force? Uh, and it's, in other words, stress per strain. And uh, if you look at strain, what is strain? If you are compressing this cylinder, the strain is the same as a fractional change in length. And if you're looking at bulks, uh, uh, like in shear wave, it's a minus change in pressure per change in volume. So this is a little bit mathematical and we don't need it for the practical uh, everyday work, but you should know what is the difference between a shear wave um, and a normal wave. Uh, it's a transverse wave that occur in an elastic medium when it is subjected to periodic shear, like here this wave that is just um, uh, radiating to the periphery. And there are several physical things that are important in this special uh, setting. The most important point is it is much slower than the regular <laughs> ultrasound wave and it attenuates very rapidly in soft tissue. And we have two basic um, methods, and both methods measure the displacement of ultrasound speckles. However, the applied force is different. On one hand, it's mechanical, uh, compression and decompression, and on the other hand, it's a um, shear wave that um, induces these small displacements and in the end, on one hand, the percentage of deformed uh, lengths uh, or uh, yeah, distance is measured as strains. And on the other hand, we are measuring the speed of the shear wave propagation. So this is a channel scheme. And now I want to frighten you with a new some guidelines. And um, these guidelines, they separate these uh, different methods, but I will more detailed explain the strain elastography and it's important that this displacement of um, voxels, pixels, um, uh, echoes uh, has either a direct mechanical force or an acoustic radiation force uh, as the origin. And if you're looking at the end, it's always the calculating and displaying of displacements. And if the force is acoustic radiation induced, we have several strategies uh, to work with this problem. And I will give you a deeper understanding with my next slides uh, about these variants um, of, um, yes, AFRI. And this should illustrate what means straight strain imaging. If you have a compression and decompression of a stiff and of an elastic, nodule, you will see different uh, radio frequency effects and uh, these can be calculated using uh, the autocorrelation method from Doppler. This is to understand this technique and this should just illustrate we are here in strain imaging 
that in the normal strain imaging, the movement is visible. It's macroscopically visible. And um, if you have very tiny movements due to respiratory movements or cardiac movements, it's usually not visible. But with these autocorrelation techniques, we can measure now movements of pixels or radio frequency signals up to microns. That's very astonishing. And uh, if you look at tissue Doppler imaging, this is just a variant of strain imaging because the Doppler velocities correlate with the displacements and so also are able to calculate strain. And this should now show you how the displacement can be performed using an RFE, a radiation, acoustic radiation induced uh, force. And this force now is used to calculate the displacement. So we have a strain method, but an RFE source of force. And this is another technique. Now we are in the shear wave speed measurement technology. And we only have one point that is important for us. And this point uh, is this little dot. It's a small measurement box, usually 5 to 10 millimeters. And if we are applying the ultrasound push wave, now the shear wave is measured within this box. So it's a single point information. And if you um, try to image now, we have um, shear wave speed measurements um, that can mm, yes, uh, express by colors. And if we go further to multiple of these uh, calculating points, uh, then we have in the end a special kind of shear wave speed imaging. This method is uh, used especially in Siemens systems and it's not the classical shear wave speed imaging you saw before. Um, this method just measures and images the bulk that is moving through the elastic tissue and the technology is based on ultra-fast ultra measurement of these movements of the bulks, uh, bulk frontiers. And I will give you um, later an image to show this, but the important point is the change of these um, foci that are induced by push waves. They migrate much faster than the transverse moves. And um, here we go on. This is the bulk frontier and it's measured. And here we have the imaging representation of this bulk and the measurement can be performed by ultra-fast calculations. Again, using the, repra, the um, correlation method. And now some substantial difference in the technique of um, strain and shear wave imaging. It's the vibration technique in strain elastography and you should just move a little bit with your fingers and there should only be a, a movement of up to three millimeters, not more, not pumping. And uh, our friend Ueno always speaks of the feather hand and he uses the fingers only. So he's a grandmaster of elastography in its clinical applications. And it's different completely from the frozen technique you're using in shear wave imaging. In shear wave techniques, you just hold the transducer very stable. And this allows a very good and high reproducibility. And all of these techniques at this stage can be expressed as 3D elastography, either strain or shear wave imaging. And here we have a list of differences between these two major basic techniques, both can be used qualitatively and quantitatively. Um, you can express kilopascals in Europe for the supersonic system. The cysts are different. You have typical artifacts that I will show you in the strain technique and the cyst is black in the shear wave technique. And we have a focus on stiffness within the lesion in the strain imaging and a focus on stiffness around the lesion uh, in the surrounding tissue in shear wave imaging. And I already spoke about the transducer. And the color coding is a problem. It's different in Europe, US sometimes compared to Asia. But 
you can inform yourself. The modern systems are able just to switch is red hard or is red blue. And this is a typical artifact I can show you here within these systems. It's blue, green, red. And whenever you see this artifact, you know it's strain imaging, it's an aliasing artifact, and it's defining a cyst. And this is the black cyst in the supersonic system. And if you read various names of these qualifying score for strain elasticity, it's all the same. The university was Tsukapa, and uh, Ito was a person who was the first in the publication, and Ueno, he was a clinical father and uh, the leader of the working group. And it's uh, respecting uh, the lesion, and it's respecting the surrounding. And um, if you go on, here you have a typical malignant lesion uh, and fat, and if you make a quotient between uh, the elasticity values of both, you get a ratio, and this ratio is better for quantifying than uh, a single lesion, uh, a single of these uh, circles. And it's important to realize that we have different cutoff values from one system to the other, and from one nation to the other. Chinese breasts are a little bit um, firmer. So now about clinical studies, you heard already a lot, so I will focus on the, um, the meta-analysis and these two were meta-analysis from Gong and Sadik and they show that uh, the strain ratio is better compared to the elasticity score and it shows you high sensitivities and specificities and here are some clinical um, examples. This is a typical um, blue a green red artifact, a cyst. Here we have an inclusion cyst. This is a complex mass and uh, you probably would also assess such a complex mass or a uh, cystic solid uh, lesion according to the um, B mode characteristics. And look at this, it looks like a complicated cyst or maybe a fibroadenoma, but it's completely stiff. This is what uh, makes a difference. It looks like maybe a viral 3 lesion, but it's stiff. Then you have to upgrade it and then it's a, in this case, was a cancer. So we have two recent meta-analyses I showed you. We have the study from Wendeberg and Fritz that um, emphasize that very soft lesions um, can be downgraded. And we have several smaller studies up to now that focusing on R3 imaging and they all point in the same direction. Um, and the direction is it helps, but it's just one additional feature amongst all the various virus descriptors. So we should not overweight the clinical impact and it's definitely no detection and no screening tool. And this is just to give you the idea of um, advanced imaging with the various facets. We have here a, a nodule. This nodule is hard and it was finally a fibroadenoma uh, with an abundance of cell. And here more clinical messages. The very soft virus ultrasound 3 and 4 lesions are repeated, can be downstaged. Many cysts show a typical artifact, so um, this is a strong supporting argument from elastography showing these artifacts. And DCIS, this is a caveat, can present as a soft lesion and makes a false positive diagnosis. Look here, this lady here is a, uh, was a new developing lesion and it was not very uh, sharply demarked in mammography. Here we have the ultrasound, triangular shape, a typical artifact. So this is definitely a very soft cyst and um, it supports our understanding it's a benign lesion. And more clinical uh, implications, it's going to complement the daily routine elastography and it increases specificity but not on cost on sensitivity compared to Byrd's ultrasound using these strategies but you should be uh, cautious and perform a corneal biopsy in all lesions with any suspicious features in high risk patients and here we have another lesion quite sharply demarked here the B mode is very suspicious it's hard 
So you are not really surprised that this lesion in the end turned out to be a ductal invasive cancer with a low proliferation fraction. So one thing that limitate the value of elastography are all these artifacts that are worth knowing a lesson, but um, I just want to state the pre-compression effect. Um, the uh, le lesion gets stiffer with the compression, stress concentration around the surface. If you press a hard uh, ball against a soft tissue, the soft tissue becomes stiffer. So this is true for superficial and for deep lesions. And there's an actual effect uh, if a stiff shell prevents strain of the soft center. And in slippery boundary, we get typical strain artifacts. And uh, then there is a phenomenon like a shear wave dropout if there is no speckle at all within uh, our lesion. So a lot of artifacts harm, and you have to understand the artifacts to apply this technique completely. And this slide should um, show you the problems we still have. This is a lesion and uh, an image of uh, Moon, who is also an EBUS lecturer. And this is strain image. This means blue heart. Um, the center is hard and the surrounding tissue is soft. And I uh, asked some question to this image. And now look at the same lesion with shear wave elastography. Now the center is soft and the surrounding is stiff. What is the definite truth? And there's a lot of work to do and you have to understand the technological base why this can happen on my theory is we have interferences in the center in the supersonics technique. So where do we stand with this new technique? Um, and if you look at the typical process and steps uh, to integrate a new methodology in the medical system, we have reached enthusiasm, we have seen skepticism, we have guidelines, but we have not seen yet a broad acceptance of this method. So I'm very curious where this method will go to. And my take home message is to date, the description of a lesion should cover the upcoming virus ultrasound categories of vascularity and elasticity as associated features. Multicenter studies have shown that elastography can downstage very soft part three and four lesions and fours. I would recommend not to downstage uh, the biopsy lesions or omit biopsy in biopsy for air lesions before we really have prospective proof of these data in the clinical daily routine. So this is more for theory up to now and I thank you very much for your attention.